Hi, it's Carrie from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Creating at Classic Cottage. This week, we're going to combine painting with jewelry making. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you do so, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Come on, let's get started. I decided to do something unique. I wanted to use Dixie Belle Moonshine Metallics, which I don't use very much because I'm not all that blingy when it comes to furniture. I wanted to go back and use some of the Dixie Bell, I call them the blingy glazes. This is a sapphire pearl. And I've used fluff and cotton and clear coat satin. I've also decided to use some of the Dixie Bell new bells and whistles line of items. This is one of the new decoupage papers. And I'm gonna use a little bit portion of this new transfer. It's cacti and succulents. It's got a whole, all of these in there so I can cut them apart and use them and build and whatever I want. All right. The other bells and whistle line that I'm going to use is the new bells and whistles, whistles silk screen stencils. All of these come in this package and I only want to use bits and pieces of them so I've cut them up. All right so we're going to use a lot of different Dixie Bell products. So let me show you where I am now. I have got these little guys, the little craft sticks. I'm not even sure how big they are. Does it even say? It doesn't say how big they are but I got them from Hobby Lobby I think and um, they're thicker than some of the craft sticks. They're, they're almost like double thickness here, see? And what I did to start with was I found some that are fairly flat. Some of them are bent and some of them are separated. And I just took my foam sanding pad or a piece of sandpaper or something and I wanted to get all of the little roughness off where they were cut. Okay, so I just did that sand around all the edges till they're smooth. All right. The next step was that I put two coats of the color cotton. Where'd it go? Cotton on here. I just wanted a nice base color, a nice bright base color for my next step. Okay. So that's where we are now. I did two of those. So I'm going to show you two different things you can do. So the first one what I did was, let's move this one aside. I took Dixie Bell Moonshine Metallics in the color Pacific and I painted it on. I've got a little bit in this little cup here. What you wanna do with your metallics though is you wanna make sure you stir them up really well so that all of the pigments get mixed up in them. And it's a very simple process of then just painting it on. As you can see, for one thing, if I put a, a background, sometimes they say do a similar background. I kind of like the bright backgrounds better. I'll try to get around on these edges too. So the edges are nice and done. One thing about metallics, you want to go all in the same direction on your last sweep through, so to speak, your last stroke through. All right, get all those brush strokes out. You don't want to overwork it either. Oops, but just make sure your last stroke is all in one direction. Then I'm gonna dry it. It's Dixie Bell, so it's gonna dry pretty quick. And then I'm gonna put a second coat. I just like a little deeper color. There are several different colors in the Moonshine Metallics. This is actually probably my favorite. Can't. Mm. Look at this. I'm not normally a blingy person when it comes to furniture, but this is gonna be so pretty in jewelry. Look how shiny that is. I hope it's coming through on the camera. But it's just so pretty. Okay, so we're gonna set that one aside to get it a little bit drier than it is now. And then we'll go back and we'll use one of the bells and whistles stencils. This one to be exact. So another thing you can do with the other one that you've got going here, is you can use the Dixie Bell Bells and Whistles 
decoupage paper. Three sheets come per package like this, and it's a lot of different designs, and that just happens to be one I've used before. But the cool thing is you don't need a lot. So how do you use this decoupage paper? Well, I've got scraps left over here from another project. So this is dry, it's been dry for a little bit. I'm gonna take what's left of my satin clear coat. And I'm going to put a coat of satin clear coat on here. Doesn't have to be real thick. This is my gonna be my adhesive. And then I'm gonna determine where on my scrap of paper I want to use. That's cool, I don't have to use the whole thing. So I'm just gonna use too many crackers. I don't know. Let's do let's do this right here. Now you can use this on furniture. People do it on the sides of their drawers for their dressers. And I'm gonna smooth it down with my hand. And then, trying to make sure I don't get any bubbles in it, right? Now I'm gonna take another coat of satin clear and go over this. So you can see it, how about that? Now I'll make sure I get all the way to the edge on this. That's it. And I'm gonna set this aside to dry. I don't like to dry that with a heat, with a hair dryer just because it might bubble up and cause rips in it. So here is the Bells and Whistles stencil. It comes in all these different designs. It comes with a little applicator tool, which I have in fact mislaid, but I like to apply it with this sponge. It came in a child's paintbrush set and I thought, oh, it's nice and dense sponge. So there you go. I'm going to try that. So it works great. But you get all of these. It's like three different sheets and it's, it's, Beautiful, lots of beautiful ones. But I'm gonna use this kind of scrolly looking thing on mine. Okay. And let's see, let's do it upside down like this. I'm gonna turn so I can see it, so then I'll turn it around so you can see it. And I'm gonna decide where on here that I want my design to show up. If you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a mesh. I don't know if you can see that really well. There's a mesh inside there, which helps it to have clean lines once it's finished. And I can lay it any old way I want to. Oh, scoot it on me. Now these are sticky on the back. If you're using freshly painted furniture, you might want to let it dry overnight. One thing about these, you want to clean them right away as soon as you're finished with them because that it'll preserve it and you'll get more uses out of it. It says up to 10 times. I haven't tried mine 10 times yet, so I don't know for sure. But here we go. Nice and stiff right there. I'm gonna take the color fluff and I'm just gonna get some on here. Way, 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 way too much. So I'm gonna offload it on a paper towel. Get a little bit more here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start a little bit off the thing. And I'm just kind of going to do like this. I'm going to tap it to begin with. Just up and down motion, just like you would normally. Oops. And, this, and the mesh helps it not to bleed through so badly. Okay, now see, I don't like that. I'm, I'm not gonna leave it like that for sure. I'm gonna take this side of my sponge and I'm just gonna kind of squeegee it down as if I was using the squeegee that came with it. And you'll see in a minute why that is a good thing. You wanna do it too many times? There we go. But you wanna see that kind of coverage there. You see how it's kind of solid there? And then when I pull this up, hopefully we'll have nice clean lines. Hopefully I didn't get carried away. Oh yeah, here we go. 
I'll put my finger in it. There we go. Ooh, I like that one. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, and also don't throw this little piece of paper away that it came on because you're going to keep that so you can store it that way. I'm going to get this really wet. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take it to the sink and wash it. I'll be right back. So now that our wash is set, I'm going to turn it upside down on a paper towel to dry. You don't want to put the sticky side on a paper towel, but you do want to put upside down on a paper towel. And I have one over here. Look how pretty that turned out. Isn't that just cool? Um, let's dry this and do the next step. So the next step is I need a hole in here for my cord. So what I'm going to need for that is a scrap piece of wood, some tape, and I'm going to decide, okay, which is the top and which is the bottom. I'm inclined to make this the top. Now I'll probably go back and finish the back later, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it down so it doesn't move around on me. And I have this eyelet set. Came in a set that I got from the hobby store. You can find it in the mixed media section or maybe even in the jewelry section for eyelets. And I'm going to need some eyelets. And these I've had for ages. So, but these are the eyelets. Or you can find these ones as well. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make a hole for my drill bit. And I'm going to kind of get in the center here. I don't want it too far down. And you have to be careful with this because it will split sometimes. As a matter of fact, I might bring it down just a smidge more. There we go. Remember, this is still fresh paint, too. All right. So as you can see now, and if you can see, I have a hole started there, but it's not all the way through. So now I'm going to take my drill. We're even going to use power tools today, ladies and gentlemen. And this drill bit is... I'm not even sure how thick it is, but just get one that kind of corresponds to the, this little area is going to go through your hole. So you need one that's going to be at least that big. So I'm going to gently try not to mess up my paint because it can get away from me. And you're taping it down so it doesn't move around on you. You're going to drill straight up and down. <laughs> It's also why you want your paint to be dry, so you don't want it to stick on there. So that's pretty good. I'm not going to drill again, but I'm going to take and do this right here just to make sure it's cleaned out. Now, I'm going to put this aside over here. I'm going to take my little eyelet, and I'm going to—I want the rounded in in the front. Also, when you're choosing eyelets, make sure they're deep enough to go through your piece of wood. I have to do a touch up there. Now, this one doesn't go all the way through, but that's okay. It goes away. I don't know if you can see or not. It goes through just enough. And I'm going to put a piece of this paper down right here so that I don't mar my paint. I can tell it's not 100% dry yet. Then the next thing you do is you take your little nail, your little eyelet set, which is what you use to start your hole with, and you put it right in that little hole, and this is gonna be loud, so you might wanna turn your volume down. And what it does is it rounds it over so it doesn't come back out, sort of like a rivet. And I'm gonna hit it from the end with the ball peen side of my hammer just to make sure it's nice and secure. And there you go. So the next step will be, if you're going to use this for a pendant, you're going to want to figure out a way to hang it around your neck. So I'm going to use this, I think it's one and a half millimeter leather cord. Or you can use faux leather or you can use another type of cord in it. And I'm going to add this little five millimeter bead. I'm gonna cut an angle on my 
There we go. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in from the front because I want that bead to land in the front there. Okay. And then you decide how long you want this to be. And you can just, the cool thing is you could actually just tie it around your neck. That's fine. Or you could put some sort of a clasp on it with a connector. I'm just going to show you how to get it attached to the pendant first. I'm going to have this bead sit on top of here, like so. I think that's pretty, because I want to see the eyelet. It's decorative. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to make an overhand knot, like so. I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to flip it this way. And I will finish this back. And then I'm going to take the cording, and I'm going to pull the knot down. There are other pretty ways to tie knots, but this is simple. I tend to like to show beginner projects just to get you started and get your mind going creatively. And then you work with the knot and you get it to turn straight. It might take a few minutes. You do not have to put a sealer on this. Once it's cured, it will be fine. You could put a gloss on there if you want to. The metallics do not require a sealer. Take this knot and do it like so. And you're gonna tie a prettier knot than I just did. But you're gonna take your time and work the knot so it's pretty. I'm trying to do it so you guys can see. And just like that, you have a pendant and then you would, whatever kind of clasp or closure that you'd want. There's one example of it. And here's the one I did earlier. Isn't that pretty? I mean, and you don't even have to use them for necklaces. You could use it for, I don't know. I don't know if I'd use it for a keychain or not because it may not stay together. Because this, this wood can split. And I, I think a keychain would lend itself to splitting. But you can, you know, see how you can just make something really cute and sweet with just a few little things. So that's the Moonshine Metallic version. Okay. Now back to our decoupage version. It's mostly dry now. So what you're gonna do, I don't like to cut this. I'll show you an easy way to get rid of this excess paper now. Basically you're gonna take a sanding pad, a piece of sandpaper. I just have this one, I don't even know where I got it. But, um, and you're going to do this. I'm doing it sort of at an angle. I'm going to do it all the way around. And see how easily it rips? This is very nice paper, so it takes a little bit more. But it still does a nice job. It's a nice, clean, straight edge. You don't have any jagged edges this way. That is kind of cute. Actually, it probably goes that way. But it's okay by itself. But let's add some more to it. So let's find one that works here. Ooh, let's try this one. And this is the beauty of these. I can cut them up to however I want to use them. I'm going to use this little guy right here. I'm not going to use all of them, but I like the colors. The rest of them aside here. And I'm going to just, I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to not use all of it, but I'm going to pull the backing off and make sure you don't stick this to anything that you don't want to use it on. And I'm going to maybe put it right here. I don't particularly care for the oranges, so I'm going to do this right here. I think what I'm going to do is stick this under here so it doesn't stick to my cardboard. It comes with a little applicator tool. 
And basically you just rub it on. And when you start seeing it to kind of go, I call it foggy or transparent underneath of there. You can tell that it's stuck down. You can kind of try to lift it up. And if it doesn't stick, rub it some more. We gotta stand up for this one now. And I'm just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And part of the problem here is because it's still attached to this part here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. And I'm just going to pull it on back because it's part of that one that's stuck. But I can always push it around the side here. I'm just going to pull that off because I don't want it. But that's just, it's different, right? And then what you're going to do when you're doing this on furniture, use this burnishing pad to kind of get it all down. And what I might do is take, where's the rest of you? Yeah, let's put you back on here and then put the rest of you on there. And these things are cool because you can build on top of top of another one. You don't have to use it just singly in one space. Look at that, just like that. Turn it around the back. I like it on the side there. And I'm gonna burnish it. It's different. I don't know if I would wear it, but it's different. And then what you can do is I'm going to take this blue sapphire glaze. One tip. Always have this shelf liner stuff for when your jars get stuck. All right. There are several different colors of this glaze. I call it the blingy glaze. There is copper, gold, silver, pearlescent, sapphire blue, I think that's all of the, the blingy ones. But then all you gotta do is put your brush in there. Now I would, I typically like to wait till my transfers and everything is dried overnight or something before I put anything over it, but just for this little sample. And this will give it a little bit of shimmer, which is kind of cool actually. And you can layer this if you if you want it a little more shimmery. Once it's dry, you can layer it. But I don't know if you can see, but it just gives it a little bit of extra, extra bling. Now, I don't know if you can see the shimmer in that already. I think I'm gonna put a second coat on, just for fun. Make it a little more shimmery. And what that does too is it kind of pushes the design a little further back. So it gives us some depth and some definition. Okay. So now I'm gonna show you with a longer eyelet. This one's a little bit longer than the other one. I'm gonna show you what you do in a case if you get one that's longer or thicker than your wood. Once again, I'm gonna put it on the board here. Oh, can you can you see that? I mean, I hope it shows up on camera. But look at the look at the shimmer on that. That is beautiful. All right, it's not quite one hundred percent dry, but I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm gonna take my eyelet setter because I found that that just gives me a place where my drill bit doesn't want to spin off. It's more like a if you have a center punch, it does the same thing. Give it a space where I want it about the center. Give me a hole there to go by to take my drill bit very gently get in there there we go that's a little busted out that's no big deal we'll cover that up with our eyelet so we put our eyelet in This time it's going to be thicker than the wood. I'll get it in there. There we go. There's the front of it. And you can see this time that it sticks up quite a bit further. 
And I'm going to put this piece of paper here so it doesn't stick to my wood here. I'm going to take my eyelet setter. And it's going to get loud again. See how it rounded it over, but it still moves in there. I'm going to give it a little bit more with this. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to hammer it with the ball paint. Well, actually the flat side first. Then the ball paint side. And be careful not to hit your fingers. And I got that a little off center, but that's all right. So there you go. And again, I mean, I would use cord that's a little more coordinated. But again, you would put the cord through there. And here's one that's another one I did. And here's another one with just transfers. So just like that, you can make some really cool jewelry with Dixie Bell Paint products and these little craft stick pieces. And I do believe they come in different sizes, so you can just experiment like crazy. So there you are. And of course, we would put cording in those as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use Dixie Bell paint products in a jewelry making project. So if you like this video, if you give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Catch you on the next video. Bye.